guys. I need my sunglasses today, as you can see. Perfect weather here in Tennessee today, guys. It's November the 3rd. It's about 50 degrees, and I love it. Can't beat it. Got a lot going on this morning. We got some logs to unload out of the dump trailer I picked up yesterday. We'll go over those here in just a second. I got to stack up some maple for air dry. My neighbor just started mowing. I think you waited till we saw this camera go up in the air before you got on the mower. It never fails. But uh, what was I saying anyway? I lost my train of thought there. That's a shocker, isn't it? We're also going to put on this grapple today and see how it works, the homestead grapple. So stick here with us, guys. Got a lot going on. And hopefully, I'll get a little bit of sawing done because it's already 10 o'clock. I got to pick up Bruno from school at 3 o'clock. See what we can get done. All right, guys, it's the next day. I got kind of tied up yesterday with some customers who came over and bought some walnut off of me. So I'm just now getting back out here this morning, but the first thing we need to do is unload those logs for the dump trailer and go from there.
what we're looking at is about 500 board feet of sassafras, and that's on the Doyle scale. There's all kinds of log scales out there that measure the board feet and logs. There's the Scribner, the International, all kinds of different scales. But here in Northeast Tennessee, everybody uses the Doyle scale. I've not run into anybody at any of these log yards that use a different scale other than Doyle. If you're new to this channel and you're wondering what I was doing by painting the ends, that is anchor seal. And when it dries, you'll never see it. And it's like a wax substance. It pretty much just seals up the end of the log and helps prevent end checking. Something else to note here, guys, not everybody does this. If you've got a large knot on the side of your log, that one right there is about probably 16 inches, put anchor seal on it because that is ingrained just like the end of the log and you'll have checks right there as well. Even though it's a knot and some people will try to saw that off the log and get rid of it, you don't know what's going to happen when you put it on your saw mill and you may be stuck with it. So anchor seal it. It looks like we got a visitor. Who is that? Well, that's Simon, the troublemaker. He showed up here a few months ago and uh, he's an intact male. We need to get him neutered probably as soon as possible. He's trying to fight everybody. Hello, Simon. He's not used to the cameras yet. What are you doing there, bud? All right, guys, on the sawmill today, we have some more hard maple, sugar maple, the same thing. It's an eight footer. It's got a little bit of a sweep to it here on the top. The diameter is about 16 inches. We may see some spalting in this. I'm not sure. Like the last video, if I see something interesting, I'll stop recording and show you guys what I'm seeing. But I don't know. It's hard to tell. So this log has a sweep to it, and I'm kind of talking about a uh, banana shape, if that made sense to you a little bow in the middle of it. Now a lot of logs have that. And the best way to fight that if you're wanting to square up a cant and get lumber out of it, we're doing five quarter boards on this one as wide as we can get, is put the belly right here, which is the, you know, the, the apex, I guess, of the sweep, right here in the middle and have it facing up and do that cut first. You're going to have more waste in the middle than the front or the back, but you got to do it to get this thing straightened up. Then I'll flip it and I'll do the horns, which is the other top pieces of it here. So you got the sweep right here in the middle and both ends come up. So we call those the horns. And you take both of those off. When you do that cut, you have more waste on the front and the end and less in the middle. And then you can go ahead and square up your camp from that point. Look for your best face because I'm sawing for grade today. I want the best face possible and go from there. And that's the best way to square up a log with a bow in it. So we'll set the wood miser for five quarter cuts. Well, this will go pretty fast. This isn't a real big log. And tomorrow we'll bring some of that sassafras up here, guys, and open it up because that is such a pleasure to saw. For one, it's unique. It's kind of hard to find sassafras, especially big enough to put on a sawmill. And number two, it smells just like root beer. It's hard to describe, guys. It smells exactly like root beer. I love that stuff. I don't love root beer, I love the wood. I'm not a root beer fan, but I like the smell of it. So uh, let's get going, guys, because I got to pick up Bruno in about an hour from school. This is all I'm going to get done today, it looks like. Hang in there with me, guys.
All right, friends, real fast. So nothing to report here as far as being unique, but I cannot brag on these blades enough, guys. Look how smooth that is right there. Looks like it's been ran through a planer. I'm using the Joe Main Turbo 7s, guys, the silver tips, and man, look how nice that cut is right there. I can't brag on those blades enough, friends. They are really nice. They do a great job.